Hey guys, it's Russell. Um, I'm up here at the boat yard for part two of my seacock video. I'm um, going to show you guys a little bit about how it goes on the boat and some installation tips. So let's get to it. Have the boat secured on jack stands here, and we're going to go up underneath it to show you what this looks like from the underside. So this is where the mushroom goes through the hull to flush the toilet. So the new mushroom will fit right in there. It's a tight fit. I'm not going to thread it in quite yet because I'm not ready to. Oh, there we go. So that's what it will look like with the Marine 4200 sealant pressed between the hull and the mushroom. I'm going to go up into the cabin and show you guys what this looks like inside the cabin. So here we are inside the boat. This is the sump under the stair just before you come in from the cabin. This is where the through hull came through the hull. You can see the hole right here. The threads would be sticking up right here. You can see the square that's a little bit cleaner here where the backing plate used to be, the old wood rotted backing plate. It was glued on with some kind of adhesive silicone. I, I don't know what this was, but taking it out, this came out with a butter knife. Um, just sliding a butter knife up underneath it. If the person uses a much heavier duty epoxy or sealant or adhesive, um, that's gonna be a lot more difficult there. Luckily, this one was fairly easy to take out and did not pull up any of the fiberglass or <clears throat> tear anything up as it was coming out. This is the hose that goes to the head. Um, currently it only has one hose clamp on it. I always recommend with under the waterline fittings to use two hose clamps and you would use one this direction and then one would be on 180 degrees so the screw would be on this side of the second hose clamp. That's just a little extra, a, like, a little extra peace of mind there for this hose. So my next step is going to be clean this surface really well, degrease it, and scuff it up with the flap disc because I'm going to have a nice surface for the new backing plate to go down on. So I need to get that cleaned up and I'm going to press in the inserts for the backing plate. I'm going to do that just with a hammer by lightly tapping them in. Remember, make sure to get those tapped into the correct holes before you go to epoxy it down, otherwise you'll never be able to use them. If, by chance, you put one in the wrong hole here, you can just tap them back out from the, the top side. Um, so that's not a huge issue. So after determining which holes line up, like I said, this is the three quarter inch, so that is for the one inch fitting. As you can see, the holes do not line up. You just rotate it till you see it lined up with the correct holes. So these are the three holes that we're gonna to wanna to press the little fittings into. So I'm gonna hammer those in real quick. I'll be right back. So I now have those little inserts hammered in to the correct three holes. When you hammer them in, um, they'll slide in almost all the way, but when you hammer them in, make sure you've got them flush in there so this thing can seat correctly. And when you go to glue it down, the sides with the nuts, or the hexes, should be the side that is glued down. That will give you something for those threads to grab onto so you can tighten the flange down. The next step is gonna be prepping the surface inside the sump, and we'll get to that and I'll be back. Okay, I've got this all cleaned up, got the old glue off, got this nice grinded up surface here, and most of all, it's very flat, so this has a nice true surface, there's no wiggle when it's gonna mount, and we'll get full contact and good adhesion. A couple things to note here is while you're doing this, it is very tight, at least in this application, to get the angle grinder down in here. It can be done, but it is tight. That's what I ended up using. Um, just be very careful not to hit any of these hoses, these wires, your grounding wire here, this hose, anything around here. Just be very careful where the blade is or the, the flap disc is. Another thing, make sure your bilge is dry so you don't risk dropping the grinder into the, the water in the bilge. I ran a shot back here as well. 
after I dried everything up just to collect some of the dust. And make sure whenever you're grinding, especially fiberglass or any kind of material that has dangerous particles to wear, a mask, some kind of breathing protection, and always eye protection. We're ready to mix up the, the epoxy. And one thing I wanted to note, I'm going to use the actual fitting here and the seacock to clamp the backing plate while it's being epoxied. So I've wrapped the threads here with a liberal amount of Teflon as well as use blue painter's tape to cover up the mushroom just in case any of that epoxy squeezes out and runs into here. This should keep this from binding with the epoxy. Preparing to epoxy the backing plate, I've got the fitting through there with Teflon around the threads and I went ahead and added a few extra layers of Teflon down at the base where most likely that epoxy is going to squeeze out. Hopefully that will keep it this from binding up. I'm going to check the fitting just, uh, just a little bit before it's fully cured to make sure, but that should keep us from epoxying the mushroom to the backing plate. Before I mix the epoxy, I just wanted to tell you guys one more thing. I went ahead and covered the back side of the uh, inserts here with some blue painter's tape. I'm going to leave that on when I epoxy it down. So when the epoxy spreads as I press this down, it's not going to get up there and get in those threads. It should keep them clean. So it's time to mix up some epoxy. Also remember guys, when applying the epoxy, the side with the hex is the side that needs to face the hull. You want the circles facing up, otherwise this will not work. Okay, I've got everything here ready to start mixing the epoxy. I also wanted to let you guys know, I went ahead and taped the back of this. I plan on bolting this to the backing plate and spinning that on to the Teflon threads which will allow this to kind of spin as it tightens down, spreading the epoxy a little bit better. And then I'll go ahead and snug it up from the bottom and let that stay in place while the epoxy cures. Don't forget your gloves here. You don't want to get this stuff all over your hands. It can be miserable. The thickened epoxy is in a regular caulk gun ready to be dispensed. I'm just going to mix it with an old butter knife I have laying around and then get things together. Okay, I've got the epoxy done. Um, I went ahead and filled the three extra holes and added a little bevel around the outside when the epoxy squished out after I clamped it between the through cock and the mushroom on the outside, which is snug to the boat. This will be clamped and hold, held into place while the epoxy sets up and the Teflon on the threads will keep the epoxy from binding so I can disassemble all of this when it's time to put the final sealant on. I went ahead and put the handle back on just to double check that this is a good position for the handle. It's the same position that it was in before. I'm happy with it. Down towards the center of the boat or the port side is off. Up is on. So I'm happy with that. We're going to let that set up and I'll be back. It's been about six hours now. I've been out compounding the hull while I wait for this to dry. The instructions for the 610 say it should be dry in five or six hours. And as you can see, it is dry. It's still just a tad flexible. Um, I could maybe make an indent with my fingernail, um, but I'm gonna leave it clamped for the full 24 hours for it to fully cure. And we'll be back with the next step. Okay, back here under the boat, I've got my dad up in the cabin with a wrench on the through cock just to hold it in place while I unscrew this with my trusty little cheater method and wood file. Let me pop this sucker out. There we go. There we go. It came out no problem. Now to disassemble the upper part, the actual seacock and I'll clean this surface up and then we'll talk about applying the 4200 adhesive sealant. We're back in the boat, the mushroom's off. Time to take off this flange, clean things up, take the tape off and add some sealant. So there we have our new backing plate permanently epoxied to the hull. That's not going anywhere. 
One thing I didn't mention in part one when I explained uh, everything you're going to need for this job is what I'm going to be using to clean up the surfaces. Just make sure they're oil free and dirt free. Um, I'll be using it on all these parts as well as the backing plate and outside the hull where the mushrooms going to mount. Some regular old acetone. Um, this should ensure it's clean and it is compatible and in fact recommended by 3M with the 4200 sealant. So now I'm going to clean everything up and get ready to mount this down. Before I went and opened the brand new tube of 4200, I wanted to get everything ready so I can do it quickly um, once I do open that. I have not installed the inside yet. I just got this prepped. Uh, hit that with some 120 sandpaper just real quick to scuff up that gel coat. Uh, make the adhesive bond a little bit better and I applied some blue painters tape here I'm also going to do this to the mushroom in hopes of keeping the mess down with the 4200 uh, When it squeezes out as I tighten it So now we will go back in the cabin and install the seacock One more thing before we actually install this thing. I wanted to clear up a couple of uh, questions I got from part one as far as the threads go your standard mushroom is going to be straight thread. The standard marine seacock is going to be straight thread on the bottom to mate up to that mushroom. It'll also be MPT thread up top, which will mate up with your standard MPT or national pipe thread bronze elbow. So with MPT threads, the slight taper forms a mechanical seal. So I will be using Teflon tape as a lubricant to help tighten this down. I'm going to go ahead and tighten this elbow down before installing this because once it's in here, this is really difficult to spin around. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten that down and make sure it is in the proper orientation before bolting it down. For my boat, it needs to be facing the starboard side while the handle faces the port side. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this with Teflon and get this tightened up. So the elbow is now tight. It's wrapped in Teflon so I could get it smoothly tight enough and in the correct orientation. It is now facing the correct direction. This is exactly how it will be going in, just behind this carpet here, right there. And now that that's ready to go, we're going to clean the surfaces with acetone, both this and the backing plate, and then apply our Loctite to our bolts and the 4200 to the bottom of the seacock. I've got the sealant applied and the Loctite applied as well. My glove already bumped the sealant and made a mess out of it, so I'm not going to videotape this till I have it down and can take these gloves off so I don't get stuff all over my phone. Okay, the seacock is down. It is sealed. The Sealant has 24 hours to cure. These bolts are nice and tight. This will not move. This is going to be the permanent installation. Now it's time to go to the outside, seal up the mushroom, and install that. Back under the boat. Got everything cleaned up and wiped down just to show you. Go ahead and even brand new parts, clean them with acetone. This all came off of the brand new mushroom. So everything's cleaned up. I've got my cheater and my wrench here to use to tighten it down. I'm going to go ahead and add the sealant and go ahead and get it installed. I won't record that because this is going to get messy and I don't want to ruin my phone. And there we have it. Our tight and sealed proper through hole mushroom installed. It is threaded up into the seacock. Now to wait 24 hours for this adhesive to cure. 24 to 48 really and then we'll go back in the water. I went ahead and connected the hose to the head. And as you can see, I used two hose clamps 180 degrees apart from each other. I do this for just an extra set step of added security and peace of mind for anything under the water line. Um, if one clamp fails, the other one's got your back. And it gives a little, twice the surface area to seal up to this elbow. Um, so that'll be good to go. That's our installation. One other thing I wanted to discuss that I have not mentioned in the video is the bonding wire. You can see it down here. 
the Groco valve has this bolt in it, which is meant for the bonding wire. A lot of people call these grounding wires. I may have referred to it as a grounding wire earlier in the video, but what it actually is is a bonding wire. And it connects your seacock here to all other underwater metals, such as your outdrive or um, trim tabs, other seacocks, anything like that. Seawater creates an electric effect and can corrode these metals under the water. So you have your sacrificial zincs that will take that corrosion before these parts actually start corroding. So unless you connect this to the bonding system, you're gonna have more issues with this piece corroding. All underwater metals should be connected to this system so the sacrificial zincs can do their work. That's pretty much the installation. We're ready to go. It'll be going back in the water on Monday. Today's Friday. Um, so it's going to set up over the weekend and go back in the water and we'll be ready to go boating. Now that the installation's complete, I'll give you one more quick comparison of the old plastic, not really seacock, leaky, wiggly thing and the actual proper seacock. It's quite an improvement. This gives me lots more peace of mind. I can now officially throw this in the garbage and be happily boating. Thanks again for watching the video and watching my channel. I really appreciate it. If you learned something, if you like it, if you want more videos, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment below if there's something in particular you want to see or any questions you have. I'd be glad to answer them. Thanks again.